Well, hello, creatives, community, and kind folks out there. Uh, welcome to RPG with TBJ. Now, some of you might be thinking, why is this title Tips and Tricks Tuesday and it's going live on Wednesday? Um, that is because we lost um, the the oldest kid in the business, the late, great Stan Lee passed away. So I did a uh, special broadcast just talking about a little bit about Stan Lee and his uh, top creations and kind of how it fit into RPGs. So I thought I would just do a little bit of a, an honor for him and uh, his influence on myself. And so we had a little talk about that. So we will continue this week uh, addressing using the arts, um, artistry um, in all its shapes and forms um, as a theme for the week. Uh, so today, Tips and Tricks Tuesday, World Building Wednesday, um, Third Pillar Thursday and Future Friday will in fact happen one day later. So Future Friday will be happening um, Saturday morning, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So yeah, that, that that's the reason why. So yes, it is titled Tips and Tricks Tuesday. I don't want to change the theme of uh, Tips and Tricks Wednesday and you, you know that, that kind of thing, World Building Thursday. I'm not gonna change all that around. Um, so I did wanna continue on that. Uh, I also want to uh, give a, a another special shout out to um, Joseph Keenan and um, um, and um, Keto in the comment section in the videos, uh, always uh, highlighting things. Um, so one one thing I did want to bring up is um, is a, a comment of Joseph Keenan made about uh, chases that we did all last week and talked about um, um, Tom and Jerry and uh, Roadrunner and the Coyote. It was pretty uh, pretty funny as a as a chase and um, and uh, Keto brings up uh, as far as art goes talks about Saint Vitus dance. It is a um, also known as um, Sydenham's chorea. It's a it's an affliction in which children uh, have uncontrollable spasms and writhing around with their arms and legs, their limbs and their face facial expressions, and um, it was it was seen to be like a possession of some sort, and eventually. Uh, became a cultural phenomenon uh, when people, when um, a saint, Saint Vitus, uh, <laughs> hey, dead man, I, I see you. Um, when um, Saint Vitus uh, martyred himself in 300 AD, and people started um, turning it into a celebration of sorts of of a. Uh, faith and and grace so the dead man the storyteller says could have done a combo for yesterday with dazzler yeah uh i'm i'm starting to think somebody likes the uh likes the original um sequence bot dazzler bodysuit with the with the old skates uh roller skates <laughs> 70s roll yeah i'm thinking somebody likes themselves some dazzler <laughs> uh there were there were plenty of um of uh, female superheroes in, in outfits that we were just like, as kids, just like, I can't show this to my parents. <laughs> um, okay, so today we will talk about how um, not just, of course, adding in art, but like we can come up with some mechanical ways we can add in art and artistry into our role-playing games. So first of all, um, uh, like we did Monday, let's come up with some uh, definitions or at least get on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the dead man stories are in the old school vibe. Oh yeah, oh man, uh, don't don't make me reminisce. <laughs> oh, hmm. okay. So, um, speaking about Dazzler, uh, a mutant that could change uh, sound into light. Um, art has comes in many forms, and so when I when I start using art, I don't necessarily mean one specific type of art we're, we're going to talk about or we can include things like fashion um art history dance singing any kind of musical instrumentation um sculpting and uh uh pottery and painting and you know uh, uh, Anything from street dancing to ballet dancing to the art of the art of war and combat. Um, you know, we talked about martial arts uh, katas 
or you know forms or what have you um, being used. Uh, capoeira is a perfect example of combining music and dance and martial arts together. You know, it's just um, uh, uh, capoeira, the uh, Afro-Brazilian um, martial art of of basically being able to fight with your your uh, hands shackled as they practice that martial arts in front of um, uh, plantation owners and them not knowing that we were they were actually um, practicing their way to kick people's asses. So it, that being said, we're talking about all forms of art, whether it's um, you know audio or visual or tactile um, in many ways, e even. Um, the art of cooking, uh, being a, a master chef or something, or coming up with uh, tasty pastries, as I mentioned before. All right, so this is tips and tricks. So we're gonna try to figure out how to um, add them into the game and come up with mechanical ways. Now, one of the one of the ways, I think one of the most simple ways to add in um, art into the game is to essentially make it important. Um, have there be become a a a value in having the art in your game and the art could be let's say fashion um Bruce says uh, making a short choreography and making a one shot has quite a bit in quite a bit in common you know what there's um uh there is a uh, I, I think I talked about this before uh, here in Columbus Ohio they have something called 30 by 30 and it was a uh, uh, dance in the park and it was for dancers, um, many of them ballet, but it was for dancers of all types to express themselves. And it was a way for them to choreograph their own their own thing. And it was, I mean, young to old, to retired, to everything. And they were able to come up with their stories. They were able to break the mold um, any way they wanted to. And they had about maybe 15 to 25 performances um, of various lengths and they would just and they performed it in a park and it was just um Genoa Park here in front of a COSI center uh center for science something anyway um it, it was great because it was just very it was a way for uh, young people to say hey listen you know I'm I'm in traditional traditional dance but I want to shape it into something that tells a, a, a compelling story. And that, that was really, that was awesome. Um, so um, adding it in the game, <laughs> Bruce says that sounds really cool. Yeah, it, it they've since canceled it because there's been construction and such, and we're not sure when it's coming back, but it was, it was really awesome. It was free. You just bring, you know, bring your own food and drink and people would just bring their wine, sit on, the, on um, uh, an elevated lawn uh, stair step lawn kind of area and just watch. It was it was really great. It had music and everything like that. Yeah. Um, Tesla Ranger says in GURPS Fantasy Adventures, there's a scene in which a PC faces off against a samurai, being led to believe he's being challenged to a sword um, duel. Turns out to be a round of Iron Chef. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and 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 that's where I was uh, heading towards. Right. Um, we can use art to. Uh, it's yet another tool in our tool belt instead of having the, you know, the, the simple, you know, we're going to have a big old fight. Um, although you could have a big old fight and like a gladiator, the person that performs the best is the one honored versus the one who, you, you know, just strikes the other person down without any uh, finesse to, to it. All right. So the one thing is we want to give our players um, an advantage for using the art. Uh, one way of doing that is having uh, social encounters th that are either modified or or e cannot even be successful unless someone engages in the artistic pursuit. So, for example, um, the players go to a dinner party and, you know, you've got the one player with like the 17 charisma, but he's got his arms folded. He's like, I'm not dancing in some stupid round of dancing and classical music this is stupid. But the other player who's got the 12 charisma says, yeah, I'll be in the round of dancing with the flowers and the, and the, and the, the music and such. And, and it's only when someone finds um, common ground that someone is able to institute any kind of influence. Um, in the, I believe in the role-playing game, uh, dungeon world, um, and I believe also in the game Leverage, there's a, there, the idea of using charisma 
or using persuasion or something like that involves leverage, which means essentially finding something that you can use to convince the other person to listen to what you're saying, finding that common ground, which is where, you know, most people, you, you know, with in p terms of public speaking or convincing or sales, you want to find common ground, right? Um, a car salesman can't sell you a car uh, unless you're willing, unless they find out you're willing to buy one, right? So, someone can't convince you of anything, just walk up to you cold on the street and try to convince you to sell you something or intimidate you or something unless they can find something um, that will influence you. For example, someone can make a threat to you, but if they, if you, let's take movies, the classic thing, someone shows a photograph on a phone or, or a Polaroid of your family, you know, then they, then the person goes, oh my God, you're threatening my family. Okay. I'll open up the bank vault, right? It's, it's finding something that, that connects to that person. And that connection could be food, it could be art, it could be dance, it could be in, um, ingratiating yourself in what their pursuits are, and then you do it. So you can, and of course, this fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons, hey, the person gets advantage if they make a successful history check or arcana check or something like that. The person gets advantage if they make a successful performance check in the, the, the round of dancing or singing or, or um, reciting poetry, or um, naming the, the 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 creators of the great statues, you know, in the um, in the the town square or something of that nature. So that's one way of doing it. Another way, especially when it comes to fashion, is to you know give someone advantage for dressing appropriately uh, where they're located or disadvantage for you know looking like a bum. Right? Doesn't matter that your character is the best. You know, warrior in in the world. If you come in into the uh, you know the the noble region, you know, smelling of dung and dirt and 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 mud, as you know, maybe the players went through a sewer and came out on the other side, and they're like, you you should listen to us, and everyone like sniffing them like, mm -mm, uh, I don't think I need to listen to you. I'm calling it the guards. Yeah, you've got disadvantage on your on your uh, various charisma style checks. Um, and of course, and it, that goes with things like bribery, um, all types of intimidation, whether it's blackmail or something, you know, uh, bribery and blackmail is using some form of leverage, right? For, if you find out someone had learned, if you learn someone has a gambling habit, that is your form of leverage to then influence them to take a bribe, right? They need to pay off their gambling debts. You dangle some coin in front of them. Maybe they might take it, listen to you, maybe leave a door unlocked, leave a key somewhere, um, you, you know, change change the guards um, 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 patterns or something like that. You know, at 1208, we'll leave the, the door open. There won't be any guards available. You've got five minutes and then they walk away with the coin in their pocket, feeling a little bit um, uh, despondent or something like that. So we, we can give mechanical advantages or disadvantages um, for artistic pursuits in your game and then of course in many ways that you, you could it it's true that you might be penalizing some of your players for not engaging in it but if you want to play a, a far more rounded game where social interactions uh exploration in the environment and combat are equally used i i think it's i think it makes perfect sense and it also this is again sharing the spotlight Okay, maybe maybe the 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 paladin smiting everything and the barbarian killing everything is cool in combat, but then some some other characters, the bard, you know, the sorcerer, whoever, the warlock might be able to shine in a uh, social situation. Now, when it comes to combat and performance, that is another thing. What whether you do the classic gladiator fight or uh, you are trying to, I, I use the example of trying to come across that you are a different um, adversary than you want to appear. For example, um, the PCs are tasked with being a decoy for the enemy and they must, you know, attack the enemy, but then retreat to get the enemy to follow them so that someone else could sneak behind enemy lines. 
then the PCs have to pretend to be something else. And I know this isn't necessarily art, but it does have to do with um, deception and performance that you appear as a swordsman that isn't as good as you are, or you have to appear that you were on harried and on the run and you weren't as professional. And that's that can be a very odd thing to ask of players. Like, hey, yeah, you get the you get to be in a fight, but you gotta you have to lose the fight, right? It's fight club. Pick a fight with someone someone random and then lose. And that can be a difficult thing to do or emulate in the game. And one of those ways is to to maybe uh, ask them for your bonus action instead of another attack. You need to use your performance or deception or persuasion skill to convince the enemy that you aren't as great a swordsman as you appear to be, and then they press the advantage, uh, losing sight of the fact that they are um, leaving their defensive post or leaving a um, a kidnapped um, uh, individual um, unwatched or something, or leaving the treasure behind as they say, hey, I'm going to take down this great swordsman, or, you know, I'm going to just you know, rid the world of, of those nasty barbarians or something, and they go after the PC, and then the PC is like, ha ha, I was just fighting with my left hand, you know, kind of, kind of thing. Um, also, with using mechanical elements in a game, um, there's a possibility, for example, let's say you do some skill challenges. Uh, the PCs are in a civilized, more noble area, and in order to, you know, talk to the mayor or talk to, you know, get ingratiate yourself with a noble family, um, they take you walking around their grounds and there are like statues or there's an ancient weapon hung on the wall. There are paintings. Um, there's a meal served. And, you know, you maybe you need three to five successful like skill challenges in order to convince the the, the the lore to hand over the magic weapon or to give you a map to um, a certain region or a key to a, to a, a crypt or something and so the PCs have to you know talk about the vintage wine or uh, the 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 tapestry that's hung on the wall or the the long you know list of uh, bas relief statues in the hall before entering the dining the dining region or even um naming the the songs that are played by uh, the musicians playing in the hall outside for everyone's entertainment. And so maybe, you know, the more successes that you get, you know, hey, okay, PCs, you need to get six total, or make it an odd number, make it like, you need to get seven total successes amongst all of you, um, you, you know, with an odd number, three failures, four successes, or seven chances rather, you get three failures, four successes, okay, you win. Um, maybe there's someone else in the party that's an adversary who's also trying to achieve the same thing, right? So maybe you could have a skill challenge against them. So it might be history versus history or performance versus performance or arcana versus arcana skills, um, even deception. You don't. You have no idea what you're talking about, but you want to deceive someone and pretend like you do. So it might be deception versus history check. Uh, high roll wins, you know what I mean? And uh, gaining those, you know, kind of having a verbal fight in many ways. And so getting six or seven or, you know, nine hits is kind of like, you know, a replacement for hit points, right? And the person that gets the most, uh, preferably picking a, a an odd number, that way you don't have ties. Um, you can say, oh, who, who wins the verbal fight? Who Who's able to name the great poets? Who's able to recite... Um, the, the historical legacy of a, of a great king or something like that. Uh, also, in addition to uh, some further tips and tricks, there are, uh, going a little bit back to uh, Monster Monday, uh, there are some adversaries that are, or could be influenced by by um, artistry in the in the game, uh, Dead Man, the storyteller says, White Wolf does this in several of their games. Um, absolutely. Um, Hell, Vampire the Masquerade is like it's it's almost you know half the game is built around the 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 um the civilized barbarism <laughs> if you will it's the 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 vague 
slash overt threats made at dinner parties and and in museums and in nightclubs as the you know the undead you know stalk and talk to each other um making veiled threats but they're in um in vampires there is a place called Elysium uh, it is it is not one place it is a place that's picked that is neutral ground for all vampires to hang out. Uh, my game, when I, because I, I was born and raised in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and we always picked the um, the art museum. And it's the same, the art museum, the same steps Rocky uh, ran up and, and whatnot. But anyway, the art museum was Elysium in our game. And so you, you could say what you want, but it, you would, basically there was a thing called a blood hunt. If you caused any kind of violence, all the other vampires had the right to hunt hunt you down and kill you. So there was a reason, there was a mechanical reason for not causing any kind of violence, but you could threaten people all you wanted, right? I mean, that was the thing. I'm gonna take down your empire, you know, beware of going into, uh, you, you know, South Philadelphia, you're gonna get killed, be, beware of going into King Sesson or, you know, or what, different areas um, all over the city. So yeah, you could have a reason for not having, you could have a, the, the threat of physical violence so overwhelming that the PCs now have to engage in social interactions to win whatever it is they want to win, um, whether it's gaining knowledge from someone or causing someone to release some kind of information. Uh, Pru Pru says, um, I can imagine certain characters bullshitting their way through an art exhibition and thereby ingratiating themselves with important people. Hell yeah, I mean, who who's to say the people in the art exhibition themselves aren't like master bullshitters? Oh, this is Oh, this is uh, from the great uh, empire of, uh, you know, eighth generations hence. Oh, you know, A-E-I-O-U and sometimes, oh. Yeah, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, also art theft, art forgery. Hell yeah. I mean, and w what a great way to, to incorporate the arts into the game. Maybe someone has to steal an art or 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 one of the players is, has a like a really high um sleight of hand skill and so they forge something whether it's like a a, a sculpted piece of something that's you know twisted metal or a painting or or a forged document and the pcs have to go in and switch off one document for another, or um, there's a key hanging around the neck of someone very important. And so the PCs have to convince this person to go off by themselves um, to a hidden location in, in the museum and then knock them out or, or um, seduce them or, or poison them or whatever, you put them to sleep to take the to, to take the key, to have to unlock the thing, to switch the, the forged document for the real thing, to take that away, you know. I mean, you could play with that. There's a ton of, of uh, multimedia we can steal those ideas from. And if you overlay that with, with a huge threat of extreme physical violence, uh, for example, maybe there is a, uh, it's known that a powerful celestial protects this this building or even this realm or something, or um, the, the building is known to be haunted by the, you know, great artistic elders or something. And they they only come out of the walls and come to fruition. You, you know, the, the Banshee only comes out when someone, uh, people in the past have tried to set fire to the great library or something. Um, Proust says <laughs> in, in, um, in air, air quotes, you know, the artist's working title for this was Mother, intriguing right you know exactly i mean some people so today there there are salespeople who are just like they can just bullshit their way through things i mean much not to put down the the um the the great skill in learning the art and practice of artistry but selling it you you need to be able to talk up something fierce, right? Um, hell, the De Beers company, uh, which hoards diamonds, um, you know, there's there was a television show here called Ice Road Truckers. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. Tesla Ranger says, from what I've heard, wine tasting is pure BS. Exactly. But if you sell it, I mean, if you really sell it, that that's the thing. It's It's the collective, convincing the collective to agree you know, uh, perception makes reality. If everyone agrees to it, it's real. 
right? If, if, if you get enough people to agree that something is a real thing, then it is real. Um, and so be, being that person that's like swishing around the wine and hmm, tasting it, oh, these, these grapes have been aged and oh, it's from the, uh, the Southern region um, under the, the bright sun of the eighth king. Oh, I heard that the queen and the king had a little fling and well, 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 you know, I mean, you start, you know, putting all these things, um, <laughs> patchwork gray says you're trying to connect ice road truckers to art grabs popcorn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, um, ice road truckers, uh, sorry, Sci um, squirrel, Ice Road Truckers um, are a, were created, the show came about because the Ice Road Truckers are there to send supplies to the people who were mining diamonds in the, uh, the, the upper Arctic. So that's where the Ice Road Truckers comes for, for artistry. And then Diamonds, the De Beers company, is the one that sold the world that diamonds are, are forever. Before Diamonds, their, Diamonds were not considered the pinnacle of the of jewels until they made it the pinnacle of jewels it didn't it wasn't a nat it was specific because of um of um you know advertisement and uh and making people believe that that was the case before diamonds it was all other kinds of gems whether it was turquoise and pearls and all that kind of stuff um but they single-handedly made diamonds and then started hoarding them mining them hoarding them um controlling the price on them that was that's a real thing uh Prue says uh qu air quotes notes of treasure and treachery in this one yes <laughs> yeah exactly i mean there there are so many things that we can we can use hell someone could convince someone that a that a poison is a is something that <laughs> um, uh, Bruce says. Oops, re rebooting out a bit today. I'm not sure if that means. Um, I don't know why the YouTube's been having this problem. I'm I'm looking at the stream, you know, in the corner of my eye, and whenever I see any problems, I'll try to see if there's a problem there. But I think it's just a. Uh, I think it's just broadcasting issues, depending on where you're at and what's going on. Um, but yeah, I mean we. I, I think it is art, of course, is underutilized. All of the arts are underutilized, but I think we can still use that as a tool. Um, one, one thing is, why is it that you see, it, it, if we go back to combat or the combat arts, why is it that we see, you know, the great weapons of warriors are always like they have a special hilt and scabbard and they're designed with uh <laughs> with everything. Fool's QB says, fashionably late but made it. Yay, woohoo! <laughs> Throwing off your hat. <laughs> um their um um uh, armor has um is lacquered and has symbols in it. Some people, you know, they they go to war in their best armor, the knights with their banners and all that kind of stuff, you know, is is a real thing. And maybe being able to discover like um, which commanders are on what side are wearing uh, certain colors or banners, you know, flags. I mean, even um, um, Game of Thrones talks about the bannermen and um, and the, the men without banners and such. And that's an important thing. Who Whose banner do you fight under? Um, we, we talked about this Monster Monday about uh, troop movements and people went to war with with actual bands, you know, there were drummers and flute players and 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 things like that. Of course, the the, the trumpeteers and such, and of course those the, that music could be heard over the the din of battle. So you could different sounds or musical in, intonations could tell the troops to do certain things, whether it's retreat or flank or anything like that. But also, it was to um, uh, encourage them into the fight or to get them out of the fight um, to dissuade the other side. Maybe they would hear the music and they would think that the other side is is far too, um, what would you call, um, confident in what they're doing. Hey, we're going to go to fight with with music in the background. There's, there's my, uh, you know, theme music. I'm going to kill your ass, right? Um, but it also could be learning, learning who's on whose side, which kings, you know, uh, we, we think of, 
we tend to think of a king and having one army, but it could be a king and having a dozen barons or duchesses or viscounts in their their community and gathering them together to go into war. And maybe knowing the history, knowing the artistry of who it is you're fighting, you could convince the other side, you know, to turn against the other person through um, any kind of like treaty or threats or, or um, you know, paying them off or something like that. Uh, Proust says um, an, an armor or weaponsmith style will have specific recognizable styles as well. Absolutely. Uh, Game of Thrones, Valyrian steel, right? It's a, it's a known recognizable you know, thing like like Damascus steel. You see someone with Damascus steel. It lets you know that not only might it uh, reflect their fighting style. Oh, they're a Southerner versus an Easterner or something. Um, it may also denote uh, their their value. Oh, that sword was given to them, or they per they had that sword crafted, or that sword was taken from. Um, you know, a king that was assassinated or something. A uh, Fool's Kiwi says, nothing makes you fight to the end and remind you of what's back home, like the song of your people. Also, Napoleon, for example, used to play a song called Victory is Ours or something like that. And like nearly half his enemies retreated on hearing it instead of him having the fight. And, and you know, we downplay that. I mean, even in our own society, there are there are certain arts, maybe we may not think of them right now, but there, there's there's arts in our world that we would kill other people for if they desecrated it or burned it down or killed it or disrespected it, right? If you hear, it, it could be this great king's been dominating these different lands. And when the people hear that music and they come over the horizon, like you, like you said for Napoleon, the people hear the music, that's it. Or maybe maybe um, an entourage of um, envoys comes into town and they start whistling the song and the people were just like, oh shoot, they're really on the move. We better give up now. And there's only like half a dozen envoys, but hearing the song or, or having a person come into town, um, you know, singing a specific song about a legendary, but uh, notoriously brutal uh, individual coming from town to town murdering people and this person comes into town beforehand telling these stories and everyone's like oh, the storyteller's here and he's talking about so and so they're going to be here soon we better you know um gird our loins <laughs> what have you um scott post says um says um og D, D had um art as treasure yes it sure did something the pcs have to wrap or carry and protect and then might have um might make it worth more to certain people like a statuette to a specific god making pcs um art merchants and that's a thing too the the we we tend to i know it's just a very simple thing and and it's fine if you use it that way but the the quote unquote gold piece value of something can change based on where it's at right um a statuette to a specific god may mean nothing to one group of people because they they worship the old gods, the pagans. But you come into, um, you you know the 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 Roman Empire or something, and you have a, a statue to a specific god. I mean, that might be worth you know ten times what the other people were willing to pay you. You know, and like you said, having to carry carry around um, a tapestry, rolled up tapestry, carrying around a painting, which you know, with, when it comes to PCs and paintings, you might as well, 10 minutes later, that thing's getting ripped up or burned or something. But that being said, you know, trying to shove it down in your portable hole or your your um, bag of holding, um, trying to find uh, an art dealer. Um, it could also be that the minute you steal something like that, we tend to think of D&D &D and dungeons and going dungeon delving, but there are going to be people who are going to be pissed off at you for going into a crypt, right? There's a reason that crypt was created or that hidden location was was sealed off. And now you're going in stealing like, you know, the great warrior's armor and the, and the, the sword the person was buried with and all of their um, accoutrement, you know, down inside this dungeon and stuff. I mean, there will be people who might recognize those things, um, recognize the coins that are minted that have um, a certain value. Um, there will be people who will, will recognize uh, the, the cloak that you're wearing. You know, hey, I want this cloak of the bat. I love that cloak of the bat. Um, anyway, you, you know, you're wearing the cloak of the bat that lets you fly and change into a bat or something. And it's cute. But, yeah, the, hey, those people loyal to Vlad the Impaler that, 
that he gifted that bat to are going to be after your ass, you know, for stealing it. So um, art also gives the idea of, yes, I'm wearing this magical armor, but I'm also put, painting a giant target on my chest for having, uh, for wearing it. Um, and the same thing can be used for any kind of artistic thing that's stolen or um, a bard learns a specific story and tells a story, you know, for storytellers or learns um, a type of poetry. And we mentioned before under uh, 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 the other day under Monster Monday, it's possible that um, it's possible that the art could elicit a magical effect without the PCs knowing it. Um, a painting that has a hypnotic effect, the bard that tells um, poetry that uh, affects people's minds or something. Uh, Patchwork Gray, uh, by the way, Patchwork Gray, uh, haven't, haven't seen the name before, so I'm glad to have you here. Patchwork Gray says, in one of my current games, the PCs are trying to steal a portrait, presumably because it will tell them what their target looks like, which is a great thing, right? The, the, uh, the, the picture of Dorian Gray, the idea of like the painting changing shape or the face changing but the individual living forever and having their um their their evil visage or their their pained visage uh, appearing on the painting I, I really like that as a as like a phylactery for a lich I, I really like a lich that looks um and acts human just an immortal human but the, the the painting shows what the lich looks like and as they're they're they need to drain souls or their painting, you know, looks older and older and stuff. Um, Foolish Kiwi, Kiwi says, imagine a bard who knows all the songs and lore of all the great generals of that world's history. Thus, knowing vaguely um, how they won or their tactics. Uh, I sense a singing <laughs> Disney villain moment. Yeah. And who's to say that? Um, imagine learning the songs or the stories or the poetry or the ballads and they literally give you they literally give you a bonus to fight this other individual right you you discover the poetry or the song or the ballad and that gives you advantage to fight the 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 people or the people who've fought under the legacy of that great sword or something and they get to know you um uh, they get to know you. And it's same thing with like what Patchwork Gray is saying, trying to find a portrait to find out what their target looks like. You could have um, an enemy that, you know, uh, uh, an enemy hiding in the shadows, like a like a, like a doppelganger or something. Right. And the doppelganger, um, like the, the old movie um, Fallen, uh, Denzel Washington movie, um, the doppelganger keeps changing shape but whistles the same tune no matter what form they take. Or the doppelganger takes this multiple shapes and no one knows who this assassin is, but always orders this rare wine or um, uh, loves to sit in the background of, of the theater. You know, there could be a, a, an ancient vampire or even a, um, an evil fiend from the netherworld, but loves to go to the theater and sits in the back watching because it gives him such peace. And so when they hear this great operatic singer, you know that the, all of a sudden the PCs find out information that this, this great evil that they've been hunting that they can't find always shows up for this one opera singer um, wherever they perform and follows them around. And this is their great weakness. Now, of course, threatening the opera singer might bring out, might bring the PCs holy hell, right? And so the opera singer has nothing to do with what's going on, but maybe there's like a, a running fight as they, as the evil person comes to the theater to hear them sing or comes into the square to hear the opera singer. And then, ah, they've been revealed, you know, or uh, the, the, the doppelganger assassin is, you know, singing the, the the tune like from fallen it was like time is on my side yes it is which in in that that one it was um a demonic spirit going into different people and every time he went to a different person he'd always sing the song like time mm, 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 yes it is you know and it, i mean you could come up with anything that that reveals that maybe someone drums a certain tune with their fingers or um, or fights a certain in a certain manner with their weapon, right? Um, we 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 kind of think of uh, of the difference between a, a knight using a long sword, a samurai using a katana, um, a fencer using a rapier, and maybe they have a certain fighting style 
that's recognized that like their artistic style is is um peri peri slash down dodge to the left or something and it's a certain they've been able to um use this particular style to the point where it is a recognizable art you know um Miyamoto Musashi I think was known for being able to fight with two katanas that were the same size um and even defeated an enemy with a wooden a boken that was like 6 inches longer than was normally measured and so was able to defeat someone because in in their eye they thought the 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 wooden weapon was a shorter distance or something a, a bunch of things like that um scott post says um or when the villain shows up one of the pcs is pretending to be the singer with a little magical assistance <laughs> the barbarian obviously yeah i mean you know, who's to say that someone can't do like a little prestidigitation or thaumaturgy to throw their voice or you know um a little manipulation of like a thunder wave spell maybe to get their voice to be different, you know? Um, Tesla Rangers says songs to run away from the reigns of Castamere. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Oh, full of you're fine. Um, but yeah, I mean, the PC's pretending to be, to be something when the villain shows up, like the villain, there's a rare wine that the villain has always been hunting for and the PCs are the wine seller or they are the story pretending to be the storyteller. Um, the, 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 the villain has been, um, is totally enamored with this singer and they, they just, this, they finally gotten the courage to approach this, um, the, this individual after years of following them from town to town and once, you know, an autograph, basically a, a, a face to face, or maybe the singer says, you know, I've seen you in the background. I want to talk to you. And the, the villain's just like, oh, me, oh, me, you know, even though the villain's like a, like a pit fiend or a bailor or something like that. He's like, you want to talk to me? I love it. Oh yeah, sure. And then they, 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 they go behind stage or something or, or, you know, in, into the dark cave where they, they've been, um, resting before they move on to another city or whatnot and then the pcs have uh, tricked the the villain and the villains you know despondent like what have you done with the singer you know that kind of thing you can you can absolutely play into the hands of using um art and artistry um in the game and wrap you can wrap it around um plenty of adventures now one thing you could also do is um if you're not someone who likes to throw in, um, say for fifth edition, uh, throw in inspiration. Uh, if you have a game that has like bennies, any kind of bennies, like a, uh, I, there's one that has boons and banes, which you roll a D6 and, you know, you, you add the D6 for your boon and you subtract the D6 for your bane or any kind of thing. Um, even in the DMG, there's like boons that uh, characters could have temporarily. And it could be that, um, I don't know, like the, a, a character gains a, a bonus to their, a plus one bonus to their charisma if they're wearing the armor, this, this um, you know, well-crafted armor, or if someone recognizes the, you know, the Valyrian steel sword, um, it gives them a, some kind of bonus or advantage, you know, one-time advantage to uh, talk to the king or something. Like you could hand out artistic elements as rewards rather than magic uh, magic items specifically right so it could be that um you know uh, the pc is able to um receives the benefit of bardic inspiration after hearing a specific song or um and and it doesn't have to be class specific right the sorcerer learns about the history of these ancient peoples and it gives them um an additional spell slot or something like you can add those kind of things in and have the art wrap into the mechanics of the game um someone recounts the an ancient ballad and it gives them the ability to uh, to heal once you know after hearing this ancient ballad it gives them you know the healing is more willpower than actual like the the binding of wounds it gives them the the um the rogue ends up getting the fighter feet a second wind temporarily once after you know repeating the the ancient mantra of the 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 ancient northern folk or something like you could add in the artistic element um someone gets a tattoo or a henna um 
a henna tattoo or real tattoo on their body that gives them something rather than a magic item. And it it in it itself could be artistic, like um um the the, the Polynesian peoples that have the stories of their their life and adventure tattooed on their body. And as the tattoos expand, so do their uh, abilities or spell-like effects or something like that. But when people see them, the more tattoos you have, maybe it has an effect socially uh, for good or bad. The Foolish Kiwi says, oh, you could have actual spells be depicted in a long wall mural, uh, like showing the scene of the first casting. A wizard could study it to learn the spell instead of reading it from a book. Hell yeah, I mean, imagine like um like a wizard's uh, uh, like a wizarding school where right the spells are not written in a book but they're literally etched on the walls in like broken pieces of glass and stone and gemstones and they they run along the walls um and only those who've walked the entire length of the walls maybe the walls are it's like 7 miles to walk all the way around it but there are these great wizards that walk around the walls all the time, you know, on their um, on their travels, and they're like putting their hands on the stone. They're reading it, and the average person can see them. But these people walk, and they learn their spells. And maybe that's how the the city is protected, right? It's and when you see these these uh, murals in other places you know that there's this protectorate of wizards. So instead of like warriors, they're like these wizard protectors that all can like, they all have like cantrips, right? They all have spells, they all blasting out like burning hands and magic missiles, like, you know, by the dozen. And um, and that's how they learn their magic. They don't, what do they need a spell book for? They go to the next, you know, next town and that's where their spells are. And maybe, maybe those murals are created by the, the murals are the spells that are created because of the individuals, like how they've been attacked. So if they've been attacked by dragons, they have a spell that protects them from the city from being burned. If they've been attacked by a wizard with a fireball spell, um, the murals are literally the spell casting to dispel that magic or something. Um, yeah, Patchwork Gray says, is, says it's hard to lose your spell book when, it, when your spell book is a freaking castle. Hell yeah, and imagine, you know, hey, we're going to teach. I'm not going to be the teacher to teach one other practitioner. We're going to teach a legion of wizards, right? Okay, you 20, we're going to learn the history of our people and and learn the spells of our people. And that would be hideously dangerous, right? Don't be a thief in this place. You know, don't, don't, if you think you're going to attack siege this place with your siege weapons, they will blast the hell out of you. You know what I mean? Or, um, and you may not know, maybe there's like anti-scrying spells. There are spells to control people's minds or force you to tell the truth or something. You know, that would be awesome. Or hell, there's no doors. The spells allow them to walk through the doors uh, to walk through the walls. Or maybe there's permanent illusions from these murals to, to, hide, um, to hide the important areas from the populace and therefore the PCs are running around the city like how do we get into the castle but literally it's an illusionary wall or something that'd be awesome too Scott, po Scott Post says Kiwi yeah that's good that would make an awesome dungeon too and the wizard comes comes out with a potent new spell exactly um Proust says that would be a, a cool goal for a wizard to have to make a spell that is high enough quality to be painted on one of those walls thereby gaining a form of immortality Maybe that is that could be a goal. You know, we often think of you know PCs having to kill or destroy something. Maybe it's maybe the goal is to bring a high enough or rarefied enough spell to this region so that they could put it on one of the very few blank portions of a wall or to erect an even taller wall to put this spell on it. And then the PCs are able to use the city as a protectorate of sorts. You know, you've brought these um these great scrolls or storytellers or or whatnot. Um, Patchwork Gray says, good way to control spell lists too. If you want to learn a new spell, you have to go to the right castle. Oh, that's damn, that's sweet. I mean, so it, you know, instead of finding, I mean, you could make a whole setting based around that, right? Like there are no spell books. In order to learn fireball, you have to go to the city that has fireball written on its walls. And, you know, 
be, beware the individual that tries to use it against them. Guaranteed, there, the, you know, it, it it may be built in. Hey, we we've got that fireball spell, and if you come here and try to use it against us, guaranteed, it's gonna we're gonna make it backfire on you. Um, or they know where you've been. You know, everyone, if you cast a certain spell, they know where you've been to, and maybe periodically you have to go back to that region to to reinstitute the spell knowledge in your head. Um, uh, let's see, Prue Prue says, that also gives your world a bunch of salty wizards who believe their spells deserve to be in a mural. Mmm, politics, absolutely, yeah, <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, um, for Faruta says, uh, the Faruta, the mastermind with swag says, fireball, no, <laughs> fireball, no jutsu. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I hope I, I pronounced that right. Yeah, I mean, could you imagine, like, I, I mean, this would hurt a whole lot for your PCs, but yeah, you cast that fireball. Um, now that it's out of your mind, you've got to go back to the city 300 miles away to relearn it. Like, you've got to, you've got to walk the castle walls to learn your spells all over again. That would, that would be, that'd be nasty. I, I would give that, I don't know if I'd give that a huge a limitation, but that would be kind of cool. Like, like, like to to get those higher level spells, the the more you have to go back to that place to get that spell to travel away, and that would really um, limit how far you can go. Like, you learn a teleport spell, but really you only want to use it to teleport back to that place to learn it all over again. Um, Vincent Shine says, uh, they had this had this in the dark eye. There are academies with exclusive spells. Yeah, I'm I'm I mean, I I played in a game where um you could name every spell. So for example, um uh Vincent says, I wish there would be more games where you can invent spells. Um, you could actually take all the spells in any of your games and literally name them. So for example, fl the floating dicks the floating disc spell used to be called Tensor's floating disc. Um, Morden Kanan, this is for Dungeons and Dragons. Morden Kanan had a bunch of spells. Um, you could actually name every spell. So w magic missile doesn't have to be a generic magic missile spell. It could be named literally after an individual that created that spell. And if you want to learn that spell, you've got to find where that individual put that mural on the wall. That would, that would be great. And then, to learn that spell, maybe you have to hunt down that specific individual or the legacy of that individual. Maybe, you know, the, the Morden more, more than Canaan spells are all to the south, whereas the Tensor and, uh, you know, um, spells are all to the north or something. Or a, a particular warlord um, requested that a particular uh, series of spells be cast on their um ingrained in their castle and you have to find them um Apru says i love that like different martial arts schools yeah absolutely there's nothing stopping anyone from saying every spell in a every spell in the game to date is a specific spell created by a specific individual and you have to find the school that teaches it and you can name it you like you don't have to use the terms like evocation or abjuration or necromancy the you could literally take any any number of spells you want put them into a school, name the school, and you're done. Um, Vincent says, um, they also have fighter academies, academies with special combat combat tricks. Absolutely. that That's another thing, too. Learning specific fighting styles are, are could be an art amongst itself. Um, you know, the huge difference between capoeira and American boxing and, you know, Shaolin martial arts and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, Jiu-Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu all look different. And so someone who's able to to spot it could could have an advantage or at least not be disadvantaged when someone pulls it out. Scott Scott Post says, go back to your dying earth Jack Vance books for some good good magic spell naming naming and lore. Yeah, the Jack Vance where Vancean magic came from, the idea that you that you read a spell, learn it. Th the spell words are ingrained in your brain, and when you cast a spell, you also forget the power of it, and you forget the words that allowed you to do it. Um, <laughs> uh, 
uh, kebab 69 says floating <laughs> floating dispel <laughs> made by me yeah um i mean it, it could be right like there's just the idea that like you know tensor's floating disc was named after someone it was a wizard named tensor who created the spell oh i maybe i need to find that person or find the the library that has that spell or find the city because as we were talking as we were kind of world building by accident you know find that individual uh, vince is there highly effective at character gen but you start out with debt and everyone thinks you're a snob <laughs> yeah. yeah um you, there there could be maybe you have to make deals to learn um spells oh the book of erotic fantasies yeah, yeah. 3.5 edition yeah yeah mm. <laughs> anyway um but you could uh prue mentioned politics right trying people desiring to get their spells on the wall maybe being pissed off that they aren't on the wall um having more political influence because more uh more spells from your school are on the walls um you could have people uh favors being um bought and sold and traded to learn certain spells uh or if you can if someone I mean, it could be its own economy, right? Someone finds the spells of this, you know, ancient spellcaster, and you know, you try to gain some kind of favor with a particular um, barony to etch their spells in their walls or teach their um, their wizards those spells were in their school. Um, there, there could even be like martial arts combat schools, but they're instead they're they're it's it's kertamen from uh, Ars Magica, kertamen meaning. Um, spell like wizard fighting uh as opposed to martial arts fighting to see who's got the better spell um or even who learned the best techniques from a specific um ancient spell caster yeah it is a whole thing uh patchwork gray says uh, uh okay then says could also be that there are wandering teachers you have to first find and travel with and patchwork gray says yeah we we got to dedicate the entire south face to the spells of the of the rich dumbass you know what and that's a thing right who just just because someone has a spell doesn't necessarily mean that it's a it's either useful or even wanted or even the people want it want it there in the first place but hey that's what you got to choose from sorry you're from the north and the northerners those are the spells they learn and you're just like oh my god these these rich assholes man it, every single day they're trying to you know find something else or or if it wasn't for them being rich they would never have they would never be as protected as they are you know there would be plenty of dictators you know trying to punch out um you know force casters to do what they want or maybe maybe most of the people in power are spellcasters themselves and there's like a a cold war going on amongst them all as they all try to learn the you know the the neutron bomb spell or something uh bruce says go into a dungeon that no one knows about come come back out with a string of spells that was lost and only alluded to the um to in the oldest of scrolls and how valuable that would be right and maybe the power of the spells has nothing to do with their their value as being old and ancient and maybe even those spells give a hint as to the power they're attached to whether it's the power attached to you know the realm of radiance or the the elemental plane of air or something and those spells you know link to that place and maybe those spells have never existed until someone finds them um uh well, Vince says in one RP server I played in, you could invent spells, and some made really weird ones. My favorites. Um, I, I I always think that spells should be flavored. The easiest way to take a spell is reskin it. Right? Um, it looks different. It's got a different color. It smells. It has a different sound. You know, my magic missile looks like skulls. The other person's magic missile looks like a flock of birds. Uh, the third person's magic missile looks like silver orbs or something you know, uh, ball bearings or whatever, you know, like every person's uh, spell, I think sh could or should be flavored or they could be flavored for the world. So if you learn the spell, it looks and sounds exactly the same because it's created by that same individual. And so if you cast it, they know where you've been or who you've learned from, um, which also may give details as to how to counter what's going on. Um, Bruce says you you will be sought after by many for different reasons. If you especially if you have an ancient scroll that has a uh, different spells on it, um, 
Pin says, uh, we're spell you were able to were you are unable to produce child after sex or you could exchange money. Uh, do, do you mean, oh, oh, like, um, 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 minor spells, like being able to produce like love potions or produce children or, um, alleviate the affliction, uh, you know, certain physical or mental afflictions and things like that. Like nothing has to be blasting castles down. It could be, uh, you know, the spells that turn lead to gold and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Foolish Kiwi says in, uh, in, in, in quotes, uh, why is every mural here about summoning snakes? <laughs> Said the barbarian before looking down and seeing all the wizard's stylish snakeskin boots. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and and what a great way to like blend in like your monsters and some other flavorful things. Like, hey, if all the, if all the murals are about snakes, maybe that's how the city defends itself. Like, you know, um, you know, all those mofo snakes in his mofo castle, right? It's like, <laughs> They summon lizards or basilisks and bahirs and, you know, wyverns and drakes and all kinds of like serpents and stuff all over the city until they're trying to look for that one spell to summon a dragon, right? They, they've never been able to find that one spell to summon the dragon and defend the city. But, um, but yeah, walk down a, a, a back alley and expect to get poisoned, you know. Uh, Jared Primon says, I've always forced force wizards to capture and study the ecology and biology of a creature to learn the magic route required to cast a spell. For example, fireball could only be learned from um, in a frit or teleportation circles only learned by an archon. Um, and I think that's absolutely positively right on point, right? Like it's the um, sympathetic magic style where in order to learn the spell, you need to learn it from a particular person or region or you, you know, um, my whole person spell can only affect giants once you, you know, get the hair of a giant or blood of a giant or something like that. Right. It's you you could you could absolutely take the take the air quotes general spells and then flavor them out into like their own little microcosms like the shield spell. The, the shield spell works against the warriors from the south because of their fighting style, but maybe not the words from the north. And you could actually mix and match and change your setting so that like maybe a shield spell looks like an actual shield um, when cast by the, the southerners, but then when the shield spells cast by the easterners, it looks like a glowing field around the body or something like that. Um, Vince says, I, I made some super flexible ones like a floating mechanical ball that could transform into all kinds of objects and back again. No, I'm, I meant the magical equivalent of, of a condom or a money changer. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I guarantee that, like, yeah, sure, fireballs are powerful. I think the person who can create the magical condom is like, is, is going to get much more money and a lot more, <laughs> more patrons um, using that that kind of spell. I think we're going downhill with that one. Um, Foolish Kiwi says, Snake City, Medusa is queen. I like it. Yeah, um, Patchwork Gr Grace says, bring, bring back bring that back to art. The general spells only work on targets that you've made a good painting or sculpture or sculpture or song of, or you need a pretty voodoo doll. Like that could be a thing where the, the spells are tied directly to uh, the, the artistic pursuits. So um, it could be tied to the banners of someone, the songs, uh, legacy of songs sung about a certain uh, person or nation or faction or people. Uh, it could be that in order to learn a song, you have in, in order to learn a spell, you have to learn the song or dance. I mean, we, we've seen martial artists that look like when they're practicing their kata, it looks like a dance in and of itself. Maybe uh, an individual has to learn that dance to cast that spell, right? If you if you ever seen like um, people practicing wushu, you know, they're tumbling and flipping and jumping in the air and doing high kicks and, and ax kicks and, and, you know, drunken sword dancing and all that kind of stuff. And it could be that, you know, in order to cast a spell, you also need a pretty, you have to learn the performance of that ability to summon the whirlwind of air or what have you, kind of like, um, you know, going towards a, and an avatar airbender kind of idea, or it could be that um, the thunder wave spell is literally like 
learning how to yodel or something, or it could be, you know, hitting a particular high note that um, that any any other practitioners have never been able to get it because their throat, their nose and throat starts to bleed. But if once you've learned it, you're able to um, to um, to expel a sound that can shatter stone and glass and such, you know, <laughs> yeah, dead minute storyteller, patchwork, great. Kill that squirrel. Absolutely. Thank, thanks patchwork, bringing it on back. So we, we've hit the hour mark. Thanks guys for joining in. I, I'm, I'm going to have to, to cut it here. Got to go to work. Um, patchwork, great. Thanks for joining us. Hadn't uh, probably you've been in there, but I haven't seen you before, but uh, great to have everyone uh, join, join in the chat. Uh, absolutely positively. Excellent. I, I, each week I try to think of a theme, but I don't try to predict what that theme is going to be. Um, and I, I guaranteed, I was like, we can throw in, in the arts into the game. And there's tons of people with great ideas. Scott Poe agrees with me. Um, lots of good ideas today. I absolutely agree. The, you know, we, we are the hive mind. We are the creatives and just getting like that little spark that's kind of what these um, these uh, live broadcasts, these these live streams are about. It's getting that little bit of of a spark to go. Oh, oh I'm going to take that. I'm going to steal that. I'm going to put that in my game. Yeah, Vince says, uh, "What about folk magic, where everyone can cast spells, but you have to know the components and words?" Um, uh, the, the idea of like spreading salt around, or like uh, knocking three times. Um, breaking a mirror, getting bad luck, like all of those things are like folk ideas that people to even today think about. So it could be that they are like spells, but they're like folklorish. And, you know, they keep, Wolfsbane keeps away wolves. You know, people don't think about it, but maybe that's what happens or something. Um, yeah, absolutely. We're going to do that. A uh, World Building Wednesday, which happens Tomorrow on Thursday, we will be doing world building Wednesday. So we're gonna we're gonna absolutely positively throw that into our world building. Um, people who are literally casting spells and not knowing it, or average people casting spells because that's part of the folklore of the world. Um <laughs> bar bars insisting that vinyl is still superior to MP3s. Hey, listen, um yeah, bards walking around with uh with beards and top and um man buns. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> we'll have to stop that one. Foolish Kiwi says that concept would carry over into modern settings as well. Pictures of scrolls don't work because the compression digitally ruins the, the details. You know, that would be really that's oh we're gonna have, dude, that's coming in for future Friday, um, which is gonna actually happen Saturday morning. Um, future Friday, where you, you know, could you digitally download a spell? Like, could you make a modern setting, a modern set, a modern setting with ancient spells used in a modern context, like downloaded on your phone or something like that, or, or playing records that, that, um, that <laughs> playing records that <laughs> something going on. So anyway, guys, unfortunately, when, when I, I leave the broadcast, uh, the chat gets cut out, which I think is stupid. Um, but I don't know, maybe if maybe it has something to do with um, my account or something like that. I'm not sure. But anyway, guys, thank you very much. Oh, um, yeah. D20 modern as hell. Hell yeah. Um, just to let you guys know, coming up on the D20, um, on the D6 and D20 of, of each of each month, we've been releasing an adventure key and adventure keys are like three to four page adventures where there's like um threats and changes and um, conditions and such so that each of those those encounters can be used multiple times by having multiple NPCs, multiple villains, um, and that kind of thing. Well, just to let you know, we are collecting 20 of them into a PDF and print-on-demand form um, being released on the D20th of November, uh, just in time for... Um, stateside um <laughs> thanksgiving um thanksgiving weekend and and such and so it, it will be released in print form and pdf form and we will be adding another one called the twisted stairs into it uh that is has not been released as an adventure key so yeah <laughs> push key was a damn that was a smooth segue dbj your your <laughs> billy mays is shiny today yes um wait is that Chocolate pot? Wait, you mean you can make chocolate pasta with that? Yes, yes, you can by adding the certain ingredients. Ching. 
anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yes, I, I am, I am riding my segue, um, into the adventure key. So yeah, look for that. Um, I, I of course will order my version of it. And once it gets on print on demand, cause I love print on demand books. Um, I'll let you guys see that. And then, yeah. Uh, the D20th, just in time for, for Black Friday. Um, guys, everybody have a great day. Thank you, thank you so much for joining me, giving me the fuel to to, to get this going. Um, I can't believe my ass gets up at like, like um, six o'clock in the morning to do this on a daily basis, but like now it's like kind of an addiction for me. Um, I expect it to, to, to go on. So I'm glad other people are like into it as much as I am. Um, I, I, I hope that I can spread spread the love out there, become like a nexus for creators and um, content creators and people that are creative in general and kind folks out there. Um, you know, um, I don't know, for us getting together, man, is the best way to punch evil in the face, right? That's what you gotta do. You gotta beat evil's ass with goodness. And so um, goodness and community and kind folks out there getting together, just talking D and D, sharing digital pizza, I love it. So everybody have a very great day. I got to head off to work. I will see you tomorrow.